Chapter 6 Pokey yawned as he looked at the window of the Friendship Express. It was very early in the morning. His boss, Trixie Louie Moon, decided he insisted he take the first train to Carolot. He grumbled a little, but eventually went along with it. He got him out doing endless errands and he could use a little break. The job he assigned wasn't too difficult. He was to find out about as much as DT Pwn 3, also known as Final Scratch, as he could. Trixie suspected she was the new Pink Ranger that I attacked her and her friends last night. She thought the DJ's arrival to Pineville and the Pink Ranger attack to be too much of a coincidence. Pokey thought the theory was silly, and without logic, she might as well blame every unicorn that came to Pineville that day. But it got him out of Pineville, so he couldn't complain too much. The DJ disappeared before Trixie could question her, so she decided to send Pokey on his information gathering mission. She was a bit too busy to do it herself. It was about 8 o'clock when he arrived at Carolot. Pokey decided his first stop was to get breakfast and go to the club, called Ground Zero, the final scratch usually worked at. After a horrible breakfast, Pokey arrived at Ground Zero. For some reason, every pace that Pokey tried served the same thing. It was bland, horrible, and the servings were tiny. A three-hoof rang his back leg. He tried to put the horrible experience out of his mind and focus on the task at hoof. Pokey knocked at the back door. After a few moments, an earth pony mare with pink mane and green coat poked her head out. Her face was covered with black stripes and that went down to her torso. It looked like some sort of tattoo made by Magic Ink. I'm sorry, we're closed. We open at 12. No, Mr. Well, I'm here, Pokey said, turning on the charm. I actually am here to see Final Scratch. You see, I'm with the Cadillac Herald. We are doing an article on the Cadillac Cup scene. And I'd like to ask her a few questions. What you could get her from me? I just had to get an interview with the most famous DJ in Carolina. I promise, I'll barely take any of her time. Oh, I'm sorry, but Final's taking a few weeks off. The mayor said sadly. It'll be some time before she gets back. Really? That's a shame. Pokey Moltis over. This was an odd coincidence. Strange time for a vacation. No holidays nearby. Is there a birthday, maybe? She's always like that, the mayor said, but annoyed. She always picks the weirdest times to have a day off. But for a few weeks, Pokey arts an eyebrow. Still just like her, the mayor said simply. Dang. Pokey did his best to look completely disappointed. Say, perhaps you could tell me a few things about her. The mayor thought over. I think it'll be okay. Come on. Pokey was led inside, and was led to what looked like an employee break room. It had a couch, a table, with a coffee machine and coffee cups, a coffee table, and a few fold-out chairs. It was a mess that smelled of used cigarettes. Pokey moaned when he saw and smelled of fresh coffee. The mayor chuckled in amusement. Would you like some coffee? Pokey nodded enthusiastically. Yes, thank you. Here poked Pokey and herself a cup of coffee, brought them to the table. I'm fade, by the way. Scribble script, Pokey lied. He took a sip of coffee and moaned in delight. It was very good, better than his boss's coffee. Maybe he could think about quitting and applying here. Nice to meet you, Scribble Squip, Fade greeted. What would you like to know? Pokey pretended to mull it over. He pulled out a notebook and a quill out of his cell bag. He sipped his coffee with his hooves. How about her early fullhood? What guy are you just thinking about being a DJ? Face up at it. Well, Vinyl's always been interested in music. Her special talent has allowed her to enter the Bard Music Academy. Well, that's actually a pretty prestigious school for a pony to go to, Pucky thought. Go on. Fate laughed. <laughs> Would you believe she was called one of the best violinists the school ever had? Pucky stared at starting to stalk. What, really? Why is she in a grand orchestra right now? Fate shrugged. Never so much interest in it. Instead, she got really into the underground Carolina music scene. Took some DJing jobs and all snowballs from there. Pokey wrote all this down. I see. She's pretty happy. She loves creating new music and experimenting. Being in a concert hall would probably kill her. Yep, this was a waste of time. Pokey thought. This mayor, this big creator, huh? So... How is she even able to afford to go to Bard Music Academy? Isn't that one of the most expensive schools in Equestria? Pucky asked. He was ready to get out of there. 
That would be thanks to the greens, Fate explained. Pucky raised an eyebrow. Greens? You know, to green grass, but everyone here calls them greens, Fate said, chuckling to herself. Pucky felt his whole world spin around. He had to brace himself in the chair. Whoop, whoop. When Lionel was a villain, she and her parents were in a terrible accident. Fate said gravely, they were trailing through the Smoky Mountains on vacation and there was a rock sign. Her parents passed away and Vinyl got hurt real bad. She lost her back leg. A green grass? Pokey asked. He heard what happened and took pity on her decided to sponsor her. Fate smiled. He's been looking after her ever since. I see. But what could it mean? Pokey thought. So they see each other often? Fate nodded. Yeah. He stops by here all the time. Could she be an agent of Greengrass? It made sense. She does errands for him while he pretends to be her generous, loving benefactor. Of course. Finds to help his feeling, saves her life, manipulates her to doing whatever he wants out of gratitude. Very clever indeed. It sounded like something the infamous Greengrass would do. Pucky always heard the Duke loved making ponies his puppets. Pucky stood up and finished his coffee. Thank you for your debt. No prob, Fade grinned. I'm looking forward to your article. Pucky left the club and rubbed his chin. Final might actually be a solid lead after all. I like why he'd sparkle. Final is actually connected to green grass, and he could not ignore this. He grinned. This trip was starting to become fun. Pucky asked around town if he had seen a pony of Vinyl's description. Her unique appearance did make her stand out after all. Promising lead led him to a diner in downtown Carolot. Pokey notices that the place did not have any hoof ringing which he approved of. His eyes widened when he got there. There, the Duke was, and Vinyl was with him. Another pony with thin glasses was with them. She had a yellow mane and white coat and was wearing a yellow pants suit. They were having lunch at a sidewalk cafe. It looked very much like they were having a friendly chat. Well, Vinyl and Greengrass were anyway. The white earth pony ate her lunch in silence. She had no expression on her face. He watched her from a distance behind an alley wall. He grinned. Finally, he got to do something exciting. Tracy told him to just gather information and leave the dangerous parts to her. But Pokey decided to ignore that order. It was his time to do something. Pokey quickly backed behind a wall. The white earth pony turned right towards him. His heart skipped a beat. Did she see me? He could feel her eyes on in the alleyway. Right on him. He didn't know why he was so scared. He shook his head. He decided to go back the way he came to approach the cafe at a different angle. He went back through the alley and went through the building. By the time he got to the cafe, Greengrass's group were already moving. He followed, making extra sure not to be seen. Every once in a while, the great earth pony would turn her head towards him. He had several close calls, but he didn't see she saw him. Pucky followed him towards the building on the outskirts of Carolot. It was the Ministry of War. They all went inside except the white earth pony. She so stayed outside scanning the area. She so stared right where Pokey was hiding. He tried to stay calm. What is with this mirror? Fi eventually she gave up and went inside. Pokey smirked. Infiltration sounded like a lot of fun. He went to the back. There was a fire escape door that no pony was looking at right now. Perfect. It wouldn't be open from this side, but Pokey had the exact spell to get around that. His horn lit up and shot the door. It opened. He peeked inside and closed it behind him. He was in a blind hallway. No pony was in sight. He carefully trotted through the building. Pokey's luck ran out when he heard some ponies coming his way. He searched around for a place to hide and found a bathroom. He went inside and hid in the stall. The ponies came in and chatted about some project. Pokey's ears perked up when he heard the word ranger. After some time, the ponies left and Pokey was alone again. Pokey sat in the toilet and thought. He was on the right track. But how to get past all the security and ponies that worked there? He was lucky he entered a part of the building that many ponies didn't go by. He wished he didn't jump in there without a plan. Oh well, too late now. Maybe he could disguise himself. He sighed. He needed to press his boss on how to become invisible when he got back. And he bang looked up. There was a rather large air duct. He grinned. The air ducts were a bit cramped, but had enough room for him to move around. He had been walking for at least ten minutes. Pokey had a good sense of direction and had a good idea of the general layout of the building, but still hadn't found green grass or vinyl. Through a vent, he found a sign that pointed towards the labs. It's a good enough place to look as any, Pokey thought. 
As Punky was moving towards the labs, he heard a familiar voice. He headed that way into the slits of the vent found what he was looking for. Vinyl and the stallion with a mustache were arguing rather loudly. Greengrass was with them. The white earth pony mare was with them as well, along with a dignified looking unicorn stallion with a gray azure coat. They appeared to be in a high tech lab of some kind. Pokey couldn't understand what anything was. In a small room with an officer facing window, what looked like a morpher attached to the wires. Pokey's eyes widened. So, they really are trying to create their own rangers. Pokey was a bit stunned. You can't do whatever you want! You almost blew our cover! The mustache stallion yelled. I was just testing your wires, Fisher. Final stop back. Set! We need you to do some real combat testing, right? In a controlled environment! Fisher said, grinding his teeth. Final shrugged. Alright, fine. We'll do it again. I agree with our chief Fisher on this one. Greengrass shouted, don't go off on your own again, please. File nodded several times. Good. Isn't our chief Fisher the one in charge of the Ministry of War? Pucky had no idea how Tracy got such powerful enemies against her. Now the business. Fisher said, a bit annoyed. My people found another planetary gem two days ago. Really? Final asked. Awesome. Which planet is it? Pluto. A mirror in a lab coat, what Tanko said. With her message, she brought out a cart with a device and a glass. A box that looked like one of the rangers more for size. I thought that was in a planet. Final asked, confused. Well, I guess those cultists didn't know that at the time. Planet or not? The mayor in a lab coat explained. It has tremendous power. It is also very dangerous. Dangerous how? Greengrass asked. Unlike the other gems, it is volatile to any pony that tries to use it. The mayor in the lab coat shook her head. Indeed. The last pony that tried to use it ended up in the hospital. He is still in a coma. Fisher tapped a hoof. So, it can't be used at all? The great selling when the greatest azure coat asked. Only because, only because they lack vision, a voice said. All eyes at Queen Pokey turned towards the new pony. She was a purple pegasus with a gray mane. She was an older pony with many wrinkles. So he had a hard, unforgiving face. Fisher groaned when he drew her. What are you doing here, Poussants? What? You didn't think I would find out about this place? Poussants said smugly. I walked in. Fisher sighed. Of course you do. Poussants gave an unpleasant smile. That Trixie Lulamoon will indeed pay dearly for humiliating me. Greengrass rolled his eyes. We might as well add her to the group, too. I did this place is supposed to be dead secret, Fowl groaned. Makes it so not as cool as everybody knows about it. The hazards of the night court, I'm afraid. Greengrass said a bit sadly. Are you okay with this? Discount, not vice count, nightlight. Nightlight sighed. Do we have a choice? No, you don't. No, you don't. Poussin said flatly. She wanted the glass box with the morpher. So, this is the power of the cult of the underworld. She eyed it hungrily, rubbing the box. I would advise the get not trying it, the mayor warned. Poussin says scared air. She started caressing the glass box. Open this up. I will not be denied. I deserve this power. All eyes turned towards the old hag. Pokey realized that this might be a good time to try and steal that morpher in the small room. He didn't want his friends facing more super rangers. What was this talk about the power of a god? He carefully crawled to the vent next door that led to the small room. He heard arguing from Poussin to the scientists. Perfect. There wasn't a vent that led to the room, but he was close enough. Pokey used his magic to loosen the vent door quietly and placed it on the side. He wiped the slip from his forehead. He carefully opened the door and used his telekinesis to grab the morpher after disconnecting it. He slowly levitated it back down towards him. He closed the door quietly. He saw one of the scientists turning this way. He dropped the device to the ground. Thankfully, the pony didn't see it and struck apparently, thinking what she saw or heard was his imagination. Pokey picked up the morpher again and levitated towards him. He grabbed the morpher when it was close. He put the vent door aside in relief. So, this is it, huh? Pokey thought. It was unsurprisingly heavy in his hoofs. The boss was going to be so excited when she sees this. This will teach you how cool and useful I am, and I can handle the dangerous stuff, no problem. Maybe with this, they can find a way to stop the other night court rangers. Pokey turned back to the commotion in the room. I don't care. Poussin sighed. This was not for me. 
Just let her do it. Greengrass said, completely exasperated. The tan man in the lab coat shut. Very well. She got the key and opened the box for her magic. Poussin grabbed the morpher greedily. It's most of time! Poussin starts the morpher forward. Suddenly, she started shaking. She cried out in ear piercing agony. She collapsed to the ground and started screaming uncontrollably. She twisted her body in every direction, flailing her limbs. Grab her, quickly, the tan mare said calmly. Sometimes it's tried and failed to restrain her. She was too strong and out of control to hold down. Even magic didn't work. Despite all this, Poussin's never stopped screaming. Call an ambulance! The scientist yelled out. Another night, the scientist left the lab. Fizzly, with the help of some of the stronger scientists in unicorn magic, they had her under control. It still didn't stop her screaming, though. She was putting on a moving car and pushed it out of the room. They could all hear her screaming from the hallway. Stars and stones, Greengrass said, shaken. I was not expecting that. Fisher nodded, looked a little shaken. Yes, you can see why it was such a looking key. Didn't think the hag deserved that, Final said, looking away. Indeed. The as you current Alec Cody Stallion said solemnly. White man with glasses closed her eyes, and other than that, she didn't change expression. Horrible thing, Pokey thought. At least no pony could use it. I need to get out of here. He motioned to leave and started crawling. He hit the floor a little harder than he intended. But there was an awful clang. Did anybody hear that? This, this is probably not. White pony earth mare looked at her, opened her eyes and drew something in a blur. So they hit the fence door, making po Pokey nearly jump in voluntary car of surprise. It seems not already found some pony. Greengrass commented, amused. There's some pony in a vent! A pony cried out. Wait! Where's the Venus Morpher? A scientist said alarm. Pony feathers! Pokey cursed. Pokey pushed the fence open with his magic, and the cover flew to the ground in front of Greengrass and the others, with a loud clang startling him. Pokey pulled out a smoke bomb he stole from Tracy and threw it, surrounding the whole area of smoke. He grabbed the Pluto Morpher with his magic before any pony could react to put it in his saddle bags. After him! Chase down! Close down the entire facility! Fisher ordered. Pokey crawled through the fence, trying to book it out there as quickly as possible. Pokey jumped out of the vent into the empty hallway. Thanks to his early explorations, he knew where the fire escapes were at. He knew there was one of those escapes only a few corridors away from where he was. He ran down the corridor, cursed when he ran into a bunch of armed security ponies blocking his path. They held their nights expensively. Pokey smirked. Huh! It's a good thing it's my specialty to pierce through anything. Don't make the oven so cr Pokey's horn lit up and he fired a golden beam at the crowd of guards who were split into two groups. He cried out in alarm and shot died. Pokey ran between them and found the fire escape he was looking for. Outside, Pokey as quickly ran as quickly as he could into the camera lot proper. He finally stopped in a back alley to catch his breath. Phew! I did it! Pokey laughed to himself and patted his saddlebags. He couldn't wait to see a look on Trixie's face when he came to the treasure. This would teach her. He probably did a better job than she could. Pokey straightened and started carrying out of the alleyway towards the train station. It was almost home three. Pokey froze him out the gate, but Snowy suddenly appeared in front of the alleyway. Seems I spoke too soon. She just stood there, motionless, staring at him with a neutral expression on her face. Hello? Can I help you? Pokey said innocently. He didn't think any point got a good look at him, so there was no way for her to know it was him. No, he didn't move. She so didn't say anything. She just continued to stare. It was really starting to creep Pokey out. So, uh, I really need to get going. I have a train to catch. It's nice meeting you. Pokey had trouble keeping the nervousness out of his voice. He backed away slowly. Pokey's eyes saw him when he saw that out of nowhere, Dory now had a knife in her left hoof. Oh my god! Nori's Haku! Look, um... Pokey started backing away. Panic starting to fill him. I don't want any trouble, I... He was suddenly grabbed a smoke bomb out of his saddlebags and threw it in Nori's face. He turned and ran as quick as he could. Pokey ran towards the exit. He needed to get out of here. Suddenly felt sharp pain in his side and fell forward to the ground painfully. He shook his head and turned towards the source of the pain and eyes widened. A knife had bed right below the ribs. It was oozing blood. He screamed the pain as he pulled it out with his magic. He grabbed the open wound with his hoof and started struggling. He screamed the pain and everything went white as he was kicked right where the knife flow was. It collapsed to the ground. Nori stood above him, staring at him with no expression on her face. Uh, Pokey? Trust me. 
even a good ranger would have problems with a knife wound. I should know. I've watched Jetman. No tooth did. Pokey pulled a Venus morph from his magic. This was his one last shot getting out of here. It's morph for time! There was explosive light, and Pokey was flung into a nearby wall. Blood streaked down as Pokey fell. He caught to the ground and whimpered. Not in his life had he ever felt so much pain. Pokey tried and failed to get up. His side went bleeding uncontrollably now. Dottery stood there, looking at him for a few moments, then looked down at the Morpher. She picked it up gingerly. She stared at the Morpher for a few moments. It's Morphin time. She said in a flat voice. There was another explosion of light, and when it dissipated, Dottery was in yellow armor. It looked a lot like the Galaxy Ranger's armor, but hers looked more like robes. Her helmet had a white tiara and pink jewels made with flowers of hearts on either side of her head. On her forehead was the symbol of Venus. Venus. Pucky gasped in complete shock. No, 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 this wasn't supposed to happen! He panicked. He was done for. The only thought that went through his mind was getting blue more for away from these ponies. How? He did not know. So he had it. He pulled it out to Pluto Morpher and used the last of his strength and magic to shoot into the sky. He pierced the sky in a golden beam. He prayed to Luna would somehow find the proper pony who could use it. Ha! <laughs> Pokey laughed weakly. This is slow, you dumb bit. He bled down with no kicked him again in his knife wound. Lemon Heart screamed as she heard something crash. Her dog, James, started freaking out. Shh, shh, shh. It's okay. It's okay. Lemon petted James to calm him down. I will see what it is. Lemon picked up a fireplace poking over my magic and went down upstairs slowly and quietly. She so looked around, thankfully didn't see any pony. She so growled frustration at the broken window. Really? Ugh. Was it a fool's playing next baseball too close to the house again? She so had to yell at Morning Glory about this later. She so turned to leave as he spotted something in the corner of her eye. She so turned and found a small, strange, rectangular device on the floor. And had a white gem in the middle of it. Lemon put down the poker and picked it up and turned it around for magic. Where did this thing come from? It was surprisingly undamaged. She grinned. It was very cool. She went to her room and picked out one of her favorite purses. Attached it to the purse and grinned. She didn't know where it came from, but it was the coolest accessory ever. She couldn't wait to show her friends. <laughs>